Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Skybound's Transformers, issue number two. Optimus Prime strolls through a tranquil forest, taking in the serene beauty of Earth. The lush plants, the vibrant wildlife, and the scenery captivate him. But his peaceful moment is shattered when he hears a sudden crunch underfoot. Looking down, he realizes he has accidentally stepped on and killed a small deer. Filled with regret, Optimus gently cradles the lifeless creature. Spike appears from the woods and comforts Optimus, assuring him it was an accident. Optimus somberly reflects on how fragile Earth is compared to his homeworld. Sensing the weight of Optimus's sorrow, Spike shifts the conversation, asking about the origin of Optimus's name. Optimus explains that the title Prime signifies his role as the leader of the Autobots a mantle passed down to him by his predecessor. Curious, Optimus asks about Spike's name, and Spike reveals that his mother, who passed away, used to call him Spikey because his hair always stood up when he was a child. Optimus, unfamiliar with the terms mom and dad, knows only the concept of family. Spike then inquires about Optimus's home, prompting the Autobot leader to recount the story of Cybertron, their war with the Decepticons, and their eventual escape to Earth aboard the Ark. Optimus expresses gratitude for Spike's assistance during the battle, admitting that their escape might not have succeeded without him, and Spike offers condolences in the wake of Bumblebee's death. Their conversation is interrupted by Cliffjumper, newly reactivated after Ratchet successfully repaired him. Optimus greets his old comrade warmly, but Cliffjumper is unsettled by Earth, panicking at the sight of Spike and Carly, and clumsily bumping into the trees. Carly, trying to calm him down, points out that if anyone should be freaking out about giant robots from space, it's her. Her humor helps ease Cliffjumper's anxiety, and they shake hands. Inside the quarry, Ratchet is working to revive the other Autobots, but he has exhausted their last energon reserves fixing Cliffjumper. Optimus considers using the Matrix of Leadership to replenish their energy, but Ratchet warns against it as the Matrix is linked to Optimus's life force, and losing him would be catastrophic. Cliffjumper grimly notes that if they're running low on Energon, the Decepticons likely are too. Meanwhile, at the nearby power plant where Sparky works, a police officer is investigating the damage from Starscream's attack, skeptical of the manager's tale of a giant robot. The officers suggest bringing in detectives, but a frantic Sparky insists they need the army. As the officer tries to calm him down, Skywarp suddenly descends from the sky, destroying the patrol car. Starscream and Soundwave arrive carrying an energy transfer module stolen from the Ark to more efficiently convert Energon from the plant. The officer fires at Starscream despite Sparky's protests, and Starscream crushes him underfoot. The Decepticons then begin draining the plant's energy when Soundwave intercepts a transmission from the U.S. military, ordering a nearby pilot with the call sign Frosting to intercept them. Amused by the thought of humans trying to fight them, Starscream engages in a dogfight with the jet. After toying with it for a while, Starscream transforms and swats the jet down. The pilot and his ride-along eject themselves out of the jet, but Starscream catches up to Frosting and crushes him between his hands. The other soldier activates a button on his parachute, turning it into a winged jetpack. As Starscream advances, the soldier pulls out a flare gun, managing to land a shot at Starscream's eye before making his escape. Deciding the soldier is not worth his time, Starscream lets him go. Back at the power plant, Sparky tries to make his escape in one of the patrol cars, but Skywarp gives chase. Just as Skywarp is about to catch him, Frosting's damaged F-18 crashes down on top of both Skywarp and Soundwave, causing an explosion that allows Sparky to get away. The explosion catches the attention of the Autobots, and Spike and Carly quickly realize that the power plant is under attack. Feeling responsible for bringing the Decepticons' war to Earth, Optimus decides to confront them, despite Ratchet's concerns about their dwindling energon reserves. Optimus instructs Cliffjumper to stay behind with Ratchet to protect their still-recovering comrades, and Spike insists on coming along to help his father, and though reluctant, Optimus agrees. Carly, worried for Spike, tries to convince him to come home with her, but Spike is determined to help. Carly makes a hard decision and decides to head back home on her own. 
As Carly drives back toward town, Laserbeak spots her and recognizes the image of Optimus Prime that she had drawn on her van earlier. When Carly arrives home, she finds Sparky there, dressed in his old army fatigues and armed with several guns. Concerned asks where her father is, and Sparky, with a heavy heart, tells her that Davy is dead. Now this has to be one of the best first few issues of a Transformers comic I've read in a long time. Most comics have a habit of starting off strong and kind of dwindling as the series goes on. And as this is an ongoing series, I really hope it doesn't fall into that rhythm and continues to give us great storytelling. I really like that they're building relationships between the humans and the Autobots so early and allowing us an inside look into Spike and Optimus' friendship. The first couple opening panels where they are sharing personal stories about their past and the history of their names, it'll be interesting to see how this friendship continues to develop in a way that is mutually beneficial as the war rages on Earth. I mean, Spike's pretty small and mushy, so it's not like he can really offer much at this point. I just hope that they don't suit him up in an Iron Man suit from Wish like they used for Noah in Rise of the Beasts. And I gotta say, as someone who's been a fan of Transformers for a really long time, and especially G1 Starscream, I love the way that they're handling his character. I almost consider it a personal win that at the moment he's the leader of the Decepticons because deep down I've always wanted that to happen, but I also like that they're showing the reality of having these Transformers fight on Earth and the consequences for humans. It almost makes me want to start a kill count on the channel just for all the humans that Starscream has squished. But let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this issue. Don't forget to like this video and sub to the channel for more. And stay tuned for my breakdown and review of Transformers issue number three. I'll see you guys next time.